we have at this point located a recording that the suspect in this incident made. It is about a 25 minute recording where he talks about what he has done. I would classify this as a confession. Uh, this was on a phone that we found in his possession uh, early this morning uh, after we had the officer involved in shooting after he detonated that bomb that he had with him. On this recording, the suspect describes the six bombs that he constructed with a level of specificity that he identified the differences among those six bombs. We have told you all along that they all had similarities, which they did as far as specific components, but there were also differences between them. And on this recording, he identified what those differences were. I know everybody is interested in a motive and understanding why, and we are never going to be able to put a ration behind these acts. But what I can tell you, having listened to that recording, he does not at all mention anything about terrorism, nor does he mention anything about hate. But instead, it is the outcry of a very uh, challenged young man talking about challenges in his personal life that led him to this point. Based on what we heard on the recording, he described the six devices, and we have recovered those six devices. He also described the seventh device, that being the one he had on him early this morning, that he detonated as our officers approached, causing the explosion and the ultimate officer involved shooting that took place. We still want our community to remain vigilant, as we always should, given the day and time in which we live now. But I also want to let the community know that he described seven explosive devices, and we have identified and, and, and are no longer in play those seven devices. So I think it's important that we put that out and that the community be aware. We do want to remain vigilant, but we have accounted for the devices that we have known about. Our goal throughout this was to put a stop to the violence to our community, but we were looking for a peaceful resolution last night. We had identified this individual as our suspect, and when we were able to locate him again up in that Round Rock area, in that, uh, in that uh, parking lot of that hotel, we brought in many, many resources who all stayed at a distance so he would not recognize that we were there. Well, we waited for the arrival of our tactical teams and the equipment that provides ballistic protection because we wanted to have the, the best outcome, but we also wanted to have the most safe environment for our officers to work with them. While we were waiting for all of those assets to arrive, the suspect drove out of the parking lot. As he drove southbound on the frontage road, we had several officers following him in unmarked vehicles and different type vehicles, not knowing where he was going to go or what might be next or whether he was armed. There was a decision made to put the stop in that frontage road before he got on I-35 and potentially went anywhere else. So our tactical team employed a tactic to stop the vehicle. And when we got to the Austin Police Department approached his vehicle, and as they got to the window and began to bang on the window, what you can see on the video is a tremendous explosion that takes place. And you see our officers fall backwards from the blast. And then ultimately it ended in the officer involved shooting. So as I described, we had officers knowing they had just stopped someone who has been involved in placing bombs around our community for three weeks, knowing the dangers involved in that, but they ran towards that and they put an end to it. One, one, one more question. Was he killed by the shooting or by the bomb? That will be a determination for the medical examiner to make. However, I will say the injuries that he sustained from the explosion were significant.